What's this? It looks so unusual and tricky to define. If you have seen some atypical dwelling places, this is one of them. It is an Earthship home, part of the concept pioneered by architect Michael Reynolds. In the 1970s this architect developed this concept by focusing on three basic ideas. First, relying on sustainable architecture. Secondly, relying on natural sources of energy to make those homes off-grid and self-sufficient. Finally, relying on simple steps that anyone can take to build one Earthship home. It may sound like a fairy tale, but this concept has been in practice for 40 years now. However, it is not that simple to achieve self-sufficiency and sustainability. There are six basic principles of a home that need to satisfy human needs, and Michael Reynolds gave a thought about each of them. Speaking of the shelter principle, using recycled and locally available materials means lower cost and lower carbon print. When it's about the power principle, the Earthship home needs solar and wind power to be off-grid and independent of public utilities. The principle of passive heating and cooling is possible via a clever design. Plus, relying on thermal mass provided by thick tire walls. The water principle is satisfied by harvesting rain and condensation so that you can satisfy all your needs. We also shouldn't forget its smart design and filtering systems. The sewage system is also considered in a way to avoid public sewage and to properly dispose harmful waste. The last principle of food means a greenhouse with proper conditions for organizing in home food production. Maybe this concept of Earthship homes is appealing to you, but there are many things that you need to take into consideration. When it comes to a location for an Earthship home, you need to find a location that will allow you to make the best of it, that is, to take advantage of the environment as much as possible. Climate, rainfall, positioning, gravity, wind, the incline of the terrain, and available materials. These are basics which influence your Earthship dwelling place. As you can see, even though you are not a professional construction worker, you need to build on your knowledge by reading some books or attending some courses so that you know about passive solar designs, angles, glazing, shading, thermal mass, thermal insulation, and lots of other things so that you don't make mistakes while working on your initiative of building this sort of home. We have mentioned the use of materials. Well, the basic material is junk and soil. A typical Earthship has 500 to 1,500 old tires. The use of soda cans is typical, especially for inner walls. Cement and concrete are needed to support tire and earth walls. If you thought about earth bags, glass, timber, sand, or stones, go for them. Among other Earthship home shapes and designs, a simple horseshoe is the most typical. It is of huge importance how you will position the horseshoe opening because of the ultimate aim to maximize light and solar heat in the winter. Thick and dense walls, achieved by filling tires with earth, are also a priority as you need thermal mass and temperature regulation inside. In terms of the roof, you need wooden beams to support the structure. Finally, you also need to plaster the walls. For that purpose, use mud plaster but pay attention to the way you put it as you need to work on improving visual and insulating effects. These steps are followed by installing solar panels and maybe windmills. The water management can be perfectly planned. Make sure the roof has catchment funnels to collect all of the water. Then, there are processes of purification and filtration. In this way, water is ready to be used for boiling, bathing, drinking. After these uses, it becomes gray water which again goes through another cleaning cycle, through grease and particle filters. There is also the possibility of feeding water into the interior botanical cell. In other words, plants and bacteria filter and oxygenate water, making it clean though not drinkable and odorless. It can be used for flushing toilets. And here is one more important fact. Instead of spending 60 to 100 gallons of water per day, which is the amount averagely used for flushing toilets in a typical house per day, the Earthship home and its water system reduce this amount to 20 gallons per day. This doesn't reduce your comfort. The last phase in the water management presents the sewage system. The toilet water after its use becomes black water. As such, it is not good to use for edible plants. Yet, there are external botanical cells. Previously, you need some sort of a conventional septic tank. The botanical cells can be south glazed and solar heated, which contributes to accelerating and intensifying anaerobic processes in the tank. Then, you need two lines out of the tank. One will go to the leach drain, and another one to the exterior botanical cell. The leach drain consists of microbial ecosystems, silt, clay, and gravel. With the added black water, they resemble a biofilter that prevents contamination of water walls. 
The idea of an Earthship home is so meaningful and powerful nowadays, with so many ecological issues. But there are some difficulties. They especially refer to cold and humid climates. There were some problems in Canada with these Earthship homes. Inadequate heating and mold problems. These problems were overcome by the use of wood stoves, generators, or propane heaters. It is also nice to mention that it is constantly worked on improving various aspects of Earthship homes, such as improving insulation and ventilation systems. By and large, Earthship homes present great options for people who think of bug-out locations or off-grid living. Even as a solution in case of some SHTF situations, they can even teach us a lesson that it is possible to live in harmony with Mother Nature without damaging it. As sustainable, self-sufficient, and simple as that.